I'm Karen Winnick, and I write and illustrate children's books. And I am going to read you a story that I wrote, a true story about Hank the Ballpark Pup. Hank the Ballpark Pup. Miller Park, home of the Milwaukee Brewers and Hank. On the Milwaukee Brewers baseball team, one teammate stands out. One teammate stands out from all the others. He's smaller, furrier, and more adorable. He's Hank, short for all the following. Hank the dog, Hank Aaron, Hank the ballpark pup. Here's how Hank got to be one of the most famous brewers of all. Mid-morning on a very warm day in Phoenix, a small scraggly mutt sniffed around the field at Mary Vale Baseball Park. It was the spring training camp for the Milwaukee Brewers baseball team. A security guard spotted, spotted him first. The dog came over and wagged his crooked tail. You're a friendly fellow. The guard petted him. How did you get that tire mark on your back? A coach looked out from his office window and hurried outside. You must be hungry. He set out a plate of scrambled eggs and sausage from the team's breakfast buffet. He set down a water bowl too. The dog gobbled the food. He gulped the water. He wagged his crooked tail and licked the coach's shoes. The coach and guard scooted him inside the office. Other team employees came over. The dog ran up to each one of them. What a cute dog. Someone must be looking for him. He needs a bath. What's wrong with his tail? Two employees took him to a veterinarian. He might have been hit by a car, said the doctor. His tail will heal. So will his scrapes and scratches. The doctor gave him some shots and checked to see if he had a microchip. But there wasn't one. It would be hard to find out who owned him. He's about two or three years old and looks like a mix of Bijan and Shih Tzu, maybe some poodle, said the doctor. He's a very friendly little mutt. That evening, one employee offered to take him home. Just for the night, said the coach. Tomorrow we need to find his owner. That night, the very dirty mutt was soaked and scrubbed until the dirt on his fur, his paws and his tail was washed away. Only the tire track mark could still be seen on his back. The next morning, a much cleaner white pup with gray ears and a little red around his left eye scampered into the office. He wagged his tail and gave wet licks all around. He's adorable. Everyone wanted to keep him. Still, the owner needed to be found. Lost dog flyers were checked around the neighborhood. The pup's photos were posted on a popular website for people searching for lost pets. Local newspapers and television stations carried his story. Over 1,000 requests were received to adopt him, but no one came forward to say he belonged to them. Finally, the Humane Society was contacted. It was decided the little pup was going to have a home in Milwaukee with the Brewers baseball team. Let's call him Hank, the guard said, short for Hank Aaron, our very famous Milwaukee baseball player. Hank tilted his head and perked his ears. At the Brewers retail store, Hank sniffed the Brewer's jersey he liked best. He was outfitted with a collar, leash, and Brewer's bowl. It was time for Hank to meet the team. Miller Park is this away. At the clubhouse, he dashed to the first baseman. The pitcher petted him. The catcher gave him a belly rub. The outfield fed him treats. All the players welcomed Hank. A pitcher 
took Hank by the leash out to the field. Hank's tail, almost healed, waved wildly. He was going to practice with the team. As the players ran from station to station for their drills, Hank zipped around the field. He bounded after balls. When the horn blew, Hank ran to the next station. As the players practiced double plays, he leaped and tried to catch the ball. At the batting station, Hank, was watched, for, Hank watched from the sidelines. The team wanted to make sure he stayed safe. For the rest of the week, Hank worked out with the team. He also appeared with, appeared with the Humane Society to raise awareness about stray dogs. Soon, newspapers, magazines, and television stations all over the country were telling Hank's story. He even received coverage in Africa, Europe, and Japan. The team's hometown newspaper, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, wrote about Hank every day. The fans back in Wisconsin wanted him back in Milwaukee with the team. But first, Hank would run in the Brewers Clements famous racing sausage race. Five oversized sausage mascots stood at the starting line. Hot dog, Italian, chorizo. Polish, Bratwurst, and Hank. Hank trotted up. He wore a hot dog roll and mustard costume on his back. The fans laughed and applauded. The race began. Hank sprinted around the bases. His tail wagged and his ears flew in the air. The fans shouted, they cheered. Hank didn't win, but he was their favorite. Before the team departed from Milwaukee, the general manager called Hank into his office. Hank sat in a big chair. Hank, you've been a good teammate, the general manager told him. We like your energy and the spirit you bring to our ball club. He presented Hank with a Hank K-9 jersey. You're now an official member of our team. Woof, woof, barked Hank. Two days later, he flew with other team members to Milwaukee. The mayor, the county executive, reporters, photographers, and hundreds of fans greeted Hank. Children hugged and kissed him. Hank licked their chins and cheeks and noses. He was presented with dog biscuits and a big cake that said, welcome to Milwaukee, Hank. After a few days of rest in his new city, it was time, opening day at Miller Park. Before the big game began, the announcer broadcast to the crowd, join us in welcoming Hank, the original baseball park pup, in his new home right here in the great city of Milwaukee. 45,000 fans jumped to their seat, feet. They cheered louder than they ever cheered before. Bernie Brewer, the Brewer's mascot, walked Hank out to home plate. Now Hank lives in the home of a Brewer's employee. He has a cozy bed, plenty of food, and a yard to run in. He has a family of kids and a dog named Bella for companionship. Hank appears with the Brewers on many special team days. He continues to attend events with the Humane Society to help dogs without homes get adopted. Hank t-shirts, pins, pennants, stuffed dogs and bobbleheads have all been created for him. A local bakery quickly sold out of Hank cookies. For everything that is sold, a portion goes into the Hank Fund to further help the Humane Society. Hank is a big celebrity. He's the ballpark pup who makes everyone happy. The paparazzi love me.
So I wanted to um, show you, um, here's the book and here's Hank as a stuffed animal and a bobblehead. And in, in Milwaukee, they, um, they sell these things in their store to raise money for um, animals through the Humane Society. And I just want to show you, I wrote the story of Hank and um, photographers took pictures and designed the book, a design a company designed the book. But normally I do illustrate some of my books, usually all of them. And I've been working on this book. It's called Thunder, how he became a search dog in his own words. And I wanted to show you how I work. I do a lot of research. Some of my stories are nonfiction. Hank is a true story, it's nonfiction. Thunder is based on truth. It's based on a dog named Diesel who trained to be a search dog, but I made up the story, so it's fiction. And sometimes I write stories about history and they're based on truth, but one story took place in 1860 and Sometimes students can't believe that I wasn't born then, but I have to make up the conversations because I wasn't there. So then it's historical fiction. So I do a lot of research and then I write the story. I don't write it once, I write it over and over and over again and make changes. And if I'm lucky enough to sell it to an editor in a publishing house, they make me rewrite it again. So here's one story I wrote and it's typed and I think it's about six type pages. And a picture book like Hank is usually 32 pages. So I take eight pieces of paper, I fold them in half, and then I cut my story apart and paste the words on the pages. And that helps me to see if my story is gonna fit. If I turn the page, I get a surprise or I change the scene. It also helps me to decide what I'm going to draw. So if it says Hank flew to Milwaukee, I would draw a picture of it. Then I start sketching and I usually sketch on tracing paper. This is a picture of thunder. This allows me to erase, but it also allows me to trace until I get my drawing well, the way I want it. And then I make a copy with a Xerox machine. And I make this, it's called a book dummy. It's not stupid, but that's what you call it. And all it is, are my words cut apart, pasted down with pencil sketches. Here's another book dummy I did for a small book. It's called Wolf Pup's Play. I did this one in color and it's for a small book. And then if I'm lucky enough to sell the book, I start doing actual paintings. Here's a painting for one of my books. It's called Jemina, the Crooked Neck Giraffe. And in this case, I worked in oil paints. And the book, goes to a printer who combines the paintings with the words, prints the books, and then it goes to a bookbinder who either glues or sews the book together. And that is how a book is made. So at least how the books that I've done are made. And sometimes a, a book is more than 32 pages and um, publishers want you to keep it to 32 pages because it takes a little more, um, extra paper and things like that. And they might print 5,000 copies. So that's how a book is made. 